Good morning, all. I welcome you to the morning session of this ITP 21 day training. Uh, today we have with us Dr. Uh, C. Sundramurthy. Uh, sir is a senior scientist and agricultural econo economist. Uh, sir is going to deliberate on a topic agri business incubation, a case of ICAR, CIR, COT, ABI Center. Uh, sir, uh, you are audible as well as visible. And also your presentation is visible. You can start, sir. Okay. Thank you. Hope I'm clear. And uh, I would uh, request participants to mute the mic so that there is no disturbance in the middle. Yeah, that has already been explained to them during this yeah. program. Yeah, thank you. So I am uh, going to present to you the uh, case of uh, agribusiness incubation that is being taken place in ICR Central Institute for Research on Cotton Technology. In this presentation, I will be just uh, dealing with the significance of cotton and what is the scope or underlying potential that is there in the cotton sector for uh, entrepreneurship. And then I will just say how we have traveled through the path of this agribusiness incubation. And I will be dealing with uh, some of the success cases which have been uh, some of the successful entrepreneurs who have been incubated in our KBA center. So this will be uh, purely focused on how we have succeeded in uh, implementing this agribusiness incubation in the cotton technology-based uh, incubation. So to uh, coming up uh, to the uh, cotton sector, so uh, I think most of you may be aware that uh, India is the leading producer of cotton in the world. And we are almost having one third of the total global acreage in our country, almost 12.6 million hectares of area is under cotton cultivation and we are producing one fourth of the total global production there is six million tons of cotton is being produced annually in the country so if you see the global production scenario they are producing around 24 million tons and we account for six million tons and uh, cotton seed if you account for almost uh, double that of uh, volume of cotton production is accounted by the cotton seeds so around 12.5 million tons of cotton seeds are being produced in the country so the cotton seed is the source of oil as well as the cake, which is the protein uh, supplement. And in this production system, we also produce almost uh, 26 million tons of uh, cotton stocks, which is on a macro level, that is on the Indian scale. And almost 5 to 6 million cotton farmers are involved in the farming. And if you go along the value chain, almost 4, 45 million uh, people are involved in any of the entrepreneurship trade or any of the activities in the cotton value chain. So we can say that this is the second uh, largest uh, cotton uh, value chain, including this textile sector. If we see, it is the second largest employer next to agriculture in the country. So now coming to the uh, lower uh, field level, micro level, when the cotton production system, if you consider as such, so in the farm level, if you take one hectare of land, on a production, we can uh, get an average 15 to 20 quintals of uh, seed cotton, which includes both the lint as well as the seed. And uh, the economic produce from the cotton production system is the lint, and the cotton seed is a byproduct. So uh, this cotton seed is being taken to the next process of ginning, where a lint is separated from the seeds. And uh, per hectare, if you see, we will be getting almost uh, 500 kg of uh, lint per hectare, and almost one ton of uh, cotton seed per hectare. And besides this, the other uh, biomass which is being produced in the cotton uh, value chain is there. 2.5 to 3 tons of cotton stocks are being produced. So these are the actual economic produce, by-produce, and the so-called uh, residue or the waste, which is being generated in the cotton production system. So uh, the basic uh, thing to uh, brief you about this is that each of these chains has their own entrepreneurial uh, potential. So that is the reason why I am just showing you this. So now coming to the value chain, so basically, if you see the uh, each and everything has a value chain of its own, and the most promising one is the lint value chain. That is, the seed cotton is ginned into cotton fiber and cotton seed, where we get almost one third of uh, lint, almost 33 to 35 percent of the total seed cotton is the cotton fiber. So this cotton fiber, after ginning, it is being taken to the process of spinning, where it is made into yarn, and then it is woven into fabric, and then finally we make garment out of it and the uh, byproduct which is a cotton seed which accounts for the uh, bulk of the volume of uh, total cotton production two-third is accounted by cotton seed 
and which on processing gives these by products like we can get lintus from the cotton seed and the outer cover hulls can be removed and the inner kernel gives you oil and the cotton seed uh, meal so basically this all four products will be obtained in the value chain that is in the value chain which is being done on a scientific basis that is whenever the oil extraction is on scientific uh, basis we get all these by products where they remove linters hulls and then go for oil extraction but uh, there are also traditional or conventional practices where they directly use it in the uh, conventional screw press where they directly press the cotton seed as such and they get the cotton meal as well as the oil where the extraction of oil will be only 11 to 12 percentage whereas when we come to the scientific uh, process of oil seed extraction we get almost 18 percentage of the oil from the seed so if you take cotton stocks it can be also put into various uses like a particle board briquettes pellets and compost but the present state uh, of how uh, this cotton stocks are replaced is that it is being simply burnt in the field or ploughed into the soil so now just coming to how the magnitude that is a value addition that happens in the lint value chain this i initially deal only with the lint value chain so as i told you that if we take one quintal of uh, cotton seed that is a kapas we can uh, get almost 33 kg of fiber lint which is the economic produce or the demand for the cotton is for this lint as such so if we process this 33 kg of cotton fiber into the process of spinning we get almost uh, 90 to 95 percent is the realization so we'll be able to get almost 30 kg of yarn cotton yarn which if it is spun uh, or woven into yarn we get 220 meters square meter of the cloth so assuming that almost 2.2 uh, meter uh, is required for making a shirt we from this we can make 100 shirts so this is the average calculation because uh, cotton has a distinct quality of different counts and taking an average quality of uh, produce from uh, 33 kg of lint we can make 100 shirts if you see the magnitude how the value grows when it is in the lint almost uh, now the price has come down uh, to around uh, 80 to 90 rupees but uh, basically it used to stay around 100 or 110 rupees assuming on an average of 100 rupees per kg of lint so the value at the lint stage will be around 3300 rupees which gets doubled in the spinning stage yeah because uh, prices of yarn is 220 rupees per kg and then when it goes to fabric we get it almost again uh, tripled 17000 and it will finally goes to the garment stage assuming that each shirt at a minimum rate of 600 rupees if we are selling also the value of the garmenting is around 60000 rupees so we can see that the value addition on an average we can uh, see of about 20 percentage or 20 times sorry 20 times increase from 3000 to 60000 this is the uh, magnitude of value addition that happens in the cotton uh, lint value chain so this is the reason why there are uh, numerous players traders involved in this value chain now coming to the other uh, byproducts uh, there is a cotton seed and stocks if you uh, take cotton seed we have uh, the other uh, products which comes out of that is the linter seed hull oil and the meal so what purpose this can be used is that linters uh, are uh, the cotton especially the cotton linters are to seem uh, found to be having the purest form of cellulose almost the crystallinity it is uh, almost it has a crystal 95 percent crystalline cellulose is present in the linters so uh, it uh, gives the potential for extracting a nano cellulose or microcrystalline cellulose which has an application uh, the mic mcc is having application in the pharma industries whereas nano cellulose has a wide application which can uh, apply in a diversified field and we can also uh, go for uh, making of security gate paper or cellulose nitrate which has an application in the explosives using this linters whereas when we come to seed hull we can convert this into a bio enriched hull through a microbial process and we can use it as a livestock feed or we can extract furfural which is a chemical which is having an industrial application so which can be extracted from the seed hull so meal if you see it is a it is a protein source of protein for uh, milch animals so this can also be diverted for use in the uh, non cattle feed like poultry and fisheries can also be uh, uh, be the source for making it as a poultry feed and we can also extract peptone from this meal 
so these are the enterprises which can be developed by these by products now coming to the stocks stocks has varied end uses which can be put into varied end uses we can make a particle board we can make a briquettes or pellets we can make it as a compost or it can be used in uh, growing of mushrooms or corrugated boxes so our institute has developed technologies on all all these aspects and we are trying to promote so that instead of uh, burning the stocks in the field uh, almost uh, 70 to 80 percent of the farmers practice that presently so we try to make them more entrepreneurial by following any of these technologies so that they get a additional benefit so that gives the scope of uh, value that is entrepreneurial activity which can be done in the cotton value chain now coming to the major activity of our institute central institute for research on cotton technology so our prime aim is to do uh, basic and strategic research in the area for processing of uh, cotton and its agrobiomass and then we have to develop value added products and then we are a major part of the quality assessment in the cotton production system besides that we our uh, another major mandate is that we have to provide skill development activities and incubation services and because of the infrastructure which has been developed in our institute we also function as a referral laboratory for the testing of cotton so we provide that commercial service as well so if we classify our activities so research is the prime area of our activity which we conduct in the entire value chain if you see the whether the lint value chain or the cotton seed value chain or the biomass value chain in all these aspects we carry out the research and we also provide a quality support for all india cotton research uh, crop research program on cotton and skill development program has been one of the key of our institute and this has also been a force which try to help us to screen some of the uh, potential entrepreneurs who are further taken up into the incubation process and we also provide the commercial services and the incubation is one among the commercial services so we have got a good infrastructure facilities to carry out all these things so if we come to the research facilities as far as the fiber testing or uh, fabric fiber yarn or fabric any of these testings so we have got a very established state of the art laboratories for uh, spinning weaving or uh, ginning so and uh, even the quality of the cloth can be tested uh, using the kawabata system we have got an advanced instrumentation like atomic force microscopy scanning electron microscope which helps us to have a better uh, research infrastructure with respect to research in the area of nanotechnology and other facilities specifically which is uh, boosting our uh, venture into the sagri business incubation is the pilot plant facilities so our institute we have a pilot plant facility for uh, ginning plant we also have a scientific cotton seed processing plant established our institute at nagpur and we have a particle board manufacturing plant which has been established with the help of uh, international funding which uh, has the capacity of almost 1 ton per day capacity and we can uh, have uh, produce the particle boards using cotton stalks or any other raw materials which can be trialed at uh, this particular plant and uh, nanocellulose pilot plant this is uh, one of its kind in uh, india we can say we have also established this plant which has a production capacity of almost 10 kg per day of nanocellulose and as i told you earlier uh, we provide specialized training programs because our uh, training programs are uh, custom uh, customized that is as per the needs of the stakeholders so earlier we give a standard programs on quality evaluation on cotton and evaluation to biomass which will be useful for everybody but later we have just fine tune our programs so that we are able to capitalize on the technologies which we have developed so we have started giving training programs on those technologies which can be taken up into a business venture like a value added value chain of the cotton seed so how this different uh, aspects of technology developed in the cotton value chain can be taken into business orientation so we thought of, thought of uh, that aspect and we started giving specialized training programs on those aspects application of nanotechnology in the finishing of textiles or its application in the agriculture so we have started focusing specifically our training programs on these various aspects so that the people who are coming for the training get uh, exposed to those new technologies developed and they can have a hands on experience which will motivate them further to go in for a entrepreneurial aspect in that particular area
so now if we come to the journey of uh, circuit in uh, this uh, agri business incubation basically our system was having that of the earlier technology transfer where uh, in the lab we used to develop the technologies and since we are working on post harvest processing of cotton we used to develop machineries and we used to look for the manufacturers who can make use of those machineries and try to promote those saying the advantages of those machineries but later we slightly developed then we thought that since the machinery is have to be taken by the manuf machinery manufacturers so we try to have a collaborative programs with those uh, machinery manufacturers where we take a problem of those industries and uh, what are the uh, additional things that has to be done so we take a collaborative research programs where we develop machineries which are being taken by the industries so but if we come to the other uh, value chain like uh, chemical processing or biochemical processing so it will be difficult to do it on a one to one basis so uh, what we thought is that initially uh, we were uh, developing the technologies and trying to look for customers then later with the emergence of this uh, national agricultural innovation program so the system of uh, technology commercialization has uh, taken a new face we can say and uh, our institute uh, on working on cotton technology was the one among the first to get the business planning and development unit uh, installed under the nap funded project and uh, that gave a face change to our institute's uh, technology transfer so rather than going for developing a technology and then uh, looking for customers we uh, just further develop into how this uh, research products or uh, research output which have come out of the lab how it can be commercialized so we had uh, experts for this way because we had a separate managers under this who worked on those technologies and try to make it as a business plan how if we establish this as a business separately so what will be the benefit so like that that uh, thought of thinking came into the system so uh, the success of bpd we can say that uh, bpd has influenced the nar system itself icr system itself to have a relook into its uh, technology transfer policy so because uh, we uh, purpose of doing research and developing technology is that it should reach the end users and it should be beneficial for them so there was a need to relook at this particular technology transfer model and bpd has uh, made a significant influence in the nar system which has later in the uh, down the years which has made them to have a concept of uh, national agriculture innovation fund through which they brought agriculture business incubation as a part of a icr plan so as a we can say the successor of this bpd icr has brought in the agri business incubation centers and initially to start with in the year 2016 they have established 27 agri business incubation centers in the country and having the uh, good uh, success rate or uh, good performance with our uh, institute bpd so we were uh, also been one of the first 27 uh, abs we were also being awarded the agri business incubation in our institute so uh, i think uh, with this emergence it is taking most of the uh, technology transfer activities have now come into the business incubation mode so basically as i told you earlier we had a uh, better infrastructure facilities uh, in for doing carrying out the research as well as the pilot plant uh, facilities where we can go for uh, slightly a uh, larger pilot scale production which we can go in for uh, marketing and we can just check all those things so we had uh, this infrastructure and we had a good team of scientists who can uh, train or provide mentorship to the people who are effectively uh, or who are enthusiastic to take up entrepreneurship activities which are technology based so uh, our agri business incubation center mainly it uh, initially focused only on uh, cotton and its by products so what our technologies which have been developed in our institute so they were given prime importance so we wanted to just uh, project uh, the technologies as a business and how we can uh, commercially utilize these by products giving benefit to the stakeholders so we were focusing on the technology developed by the institute through this incubation center so in order to just uh, enthuse them we had given a specialized training programs which uh, gives them an experience and also we had a entrepreneurship development programs have also been organized which will attract them and to get them into a business mode with this technology so the basic process how the incubation center operates in uh, circuit is that those who are interested either through the training process or we generally advertise the agri business incubation on the list of technologies which we have 
which can be commercially exploited so we just advertise them so those who are interested in those things and those who are being influenced by our uh, training programs they just get uh, admitted to our uh, incubation center and we have got a good team of scientists who can provide technological mentoring to them and in order to facilitate a good uh, incubation we have also created a physical infrastructure like a working office for those people that is a physical office in our institute ca campus itself where those who want to stay in house they can come and uh, use this office space by paying a nominal rent so they can uh, make use of this space and they are given access to our laboratories and our pilot plant facilities where they can uh, develop the prototype or uh, generally initially we thought we started it with uh, our own technologies people will have uh, come and uh, experience its production and then go for a test marketing so based on the feedback from the customers they can any refinement if they want to do they can do it and uh, based on the since it is uh, our technology which they are doing this ip management everything will be coming into place and once they are confident that they will they have developed their wings to fly then they exit the incubator and they enter into a full fledged startup mode this, this is how it started initially that is our technology then uh, later we have slightly broadened the scope where people who have their own ideas they can also come in register as a incubator but uh, who can uh, use the existing facilities so they can come here register themselves use the existing facilities trial it develop for the, their prototype and then again they can test market and they can succeed so we have also just expanded our scope of our incub uh, incubation system slightly broader so that uh, those who are having innovative ideas they can also get benefited out of this system so now i will uh, just go to the uh, some of the business cases or the success cases which have come up in the cotton value chain so we will just uh, i just split it into three parts one uh, dealing with the cotton value chain one on by products that is a cotton seed or uh, meal processing and then a few on the cotton biomass so so that uh, you will have that uh, the facility uh, progress of uh, incubation or entrepreneurial activity in three different segments so as i told you this cotton value chain is the more uh, remunerative among all of them and this particular is a uh, very we can also say that it is one of the success case of uh, icr circuit uh, here uh, basically how this got developed is that the institute uh, we had our uh, flagship program where we wanted to blend cotton with other uh, natural fibers like bamboo other things so that we can uh, make the utility of cotton slightly broader it's especially if you see in the sports where uh, cotton has a very limited use because of its uh, basic property that when it absorbs moisture it gets uh, swells in the size and it becomes more bulkier and it is very difficult for cotton to give out the moisture so as a result it has got a limited utility in the application of sportswear so later we thought of blending it with other natural fibers like bamboo fibers or giving some specialized treatment so that its moisture management can be made efficient so we have developed the electro spinning technology where which we give a finishing on one layer so that moisture gets absorbed in the inner surface and it gets released out to the outer surface so that was the outcome of the project and uh, how this uh, became a better startup is that we had a uh, two graduates from iit kanpur and uh, one uh, one of uh, and the third one is from the national institute of fashion technology so they three somehow got this idea of farish and they came up with a proposal because they are almost blank since they were in uh, engineering field they are completely new and the fashion technology is also she is uh, very uh, new to the technology aspect so they were the first uh, in house incubators of our ab center so they have uh, almost uh, got the specialized training and they had a special mentorship of all the scientists who were involved in this uh, textile technology aspects so they based on this inputs they developed a athleiser so actually it has been named as t-shirt itself is named as a gray t-shirt and it is now uh, become very prominent so they have used 95% cotton with lycra so that it is elastic they have given an anti odor treatment moisture management so that the sweat absorbed is easily released so that it can be used for a both office as well as if you are uh, having a busy active life you can use it without having any issue so uh, this has been uh, one of the quite success and uh, they have uh, grown uh, uh, much wider uh, because they were able to uh, sell their products even out of the country 
so each t-shirts they are uh, pricing it at around 1300 rupees and they are uh, into online sales so one of the advantage of this is that you need not to develop the entire uh, physical infrastructure to manufacture this product because most of them are being outsourced most of them are already existing facilities are there for uh, knitting for finishing everything so the thing is you have to source the uh, raw material get it uh, done at using this technology in a proper way at the knitting and then giving a proper finishing and then packing will be the thing so it will be uh, mostly a working capital based investment over here so those three they were able to successfully do it and uh, they had even after three years of uh, business in the field they were able to reach up to a gross annual turnover of 40 to 50 lakh rupees so this was a success and the picture shows that actually this has been found to be one of the one of the successful startup which has emerged out of this uh, icr abi so we had a opportunity to display this uh, t-shirt in the rashtrapati bhavan uh, in one of the exhibitions arranged in the rashtrapati bhavan so next coming to uh, another venture it is a product made uh, made out of the naturally colored cotton so if you see uh, in india we don't have a large area under naturally colored cotton but there are few packets where other crops doesn't come because this is uh, more resilient to uh, pest and disease or uh, uh, less availability of water so it comes naturally in those drought prone areas so only few packets this is coming and basically this uh, staple length of this colored cotton fibers are very short and the processing there is some difficulty as a result of which it has not uh, taken up in a larger way so our institute we have developed a technology where we can process this uh, colored cotton into value added products we are we are able to just uh, uh, develop a technology where it can be spun into yarn because sp- ginning and spinning of this colored cotton is uh, one of the major issue so we have developed technology to do this and we have gone up to a level of making a overcoat so which has uh, attracted uh, people to look into this business so benefit of this technology is that when you go in for using a naturally colored cotton there is uh, no need to go in for a chemical processing or uh, of for dyeing so dyeing is one of the most tedious or chemical process which is both uh, costly affair in the processing as well as it has got an influence on the environmental impact as well so if you go in for this uh, naturally colored cotton it has got this dual advantage you have got a low pollution uh, product and the uh, other natural benefit is that with the time the uh, color fastness is also very good that is the color doesn't fade away and if you see it has a natural uh, inherent uh, uv protection capability so this has a more friendly advantage so we thought it will have a, a good business entrepreneurship so as we thought uh, two entre- uh, incubators have registered to develop these products one is uh, mrs uh, kotak commodities who were earlier dealing with the they are having a largest ginning industry and they are having dealing with the cotton future market so they thought this will be a good venture and they have become an incubator and they are uh, developing the product and another promising uh, incubator is the uh, deepak and netra swarup so they are uh, actually a, uh, netra swarup is a designer so she thought that this will be a better uh, raw material to create a niche market and now they are developing a product based on this especially for the baby wears so this will be they are developing a products and they are promoting naturally colored cotton based baby wears so which has a good great potential so they are still under the incubation process and next as i told you earlier this nano cellulose spirit plant has been established in our institute with a production capacity of 10 kg per day so this is a first of its kind in india actually this is a fifth pilot plant to produce nano cellulose in the world as such so the basic thing is that the nano cellulose has got a wider application in uh, different fields and as a research component we have explored majority of them that is uh, most of them are in uh, collaboration with the industrial partners that is how uh, we can uh, by using nano cellulose whether this cracking of cement can be stopped so we have worked in collaboration with lafarge when it comes to cement and ramcharan disease when it comes to rum- rubber composites we have also developed how it can improve the uh, quality of paper and uh, by using it how we can ensure the better uh, keeping quality of the packaging material by using it as a filler material so we have done a lot of research in this so this has enthused one of the uh, spinning industry person 
who came uh, with his own idea. He thought that based on the characteristics of this nanocellulose, he thought that uh, why not we use it as a replacement for one of the uh, lubricant which is being used in the spinning process. So he came up with this idea and uh, he got exposed to nanocellulose. He tried those properties and he replaced it to the spin oil. And he found that this nanocellulose was found to improve the spinning performance. It is able to be a good lubricant agent compared to the spin oil. And it is able to significantly reduce its cost and improve the quality of this produce. So this is uh, one of the success cases where we can say that uh, the person has come up with, with his own idea. He, uh, he tried and tested it in our institute and he was able to be successfully uh, demonstrate that and he is still using it as a lubricant in his industry. So another uh, incubation venture is the development of nano zinc based antimicrobial products. So initially we, we had uh, developed the uh, nano zinc based finishing on these fabrics. But the basic problem with those that technology is that whenever we give a finishing as a separate layer, so in the process of washing it gets removed frequently. So the after some five to ten verses it so fast. So we developed a technology where we can develop this nano zinc oxide in situ in the material through the chemical process. So this technology has been taken over by um, one of the NGO, and it is uh, Green Globe. They are located in Mumbai. So they thought this uh, would be a uh, better. And uh, the beauty of this is that we have also tested this bed sheet to test for cross contamination because in uh, if you see in hospitals, there is a chance of cross cross contamination because the same bed sheet is being used by different patients who are having a different diseases. So we thought how far it will be able to reduce this cross contamination. And we have tested in the IPMER uh, in the Institute uh, of Physical Medicine, which is located in Mumbai. And uh, based on their report, uh, they have uh, confirmed that the cross contamination is significantly reduced. That is the bacterial contamination of different things are being taken care of by the antimicrobial property of the bed sheets. So this Green Globe is now uh, doing it outsourcing. They are taking our technology and uh, developing uh, it on an outsourcing basis and they are making this product. So now coming to the uh, technology in the area of uh, cotton byproducts. So this one specifically we have uh, one uh, specific technology which is on the cotton seed cake. So uh, as we told almost 12 million tons of cotton seed is being produced of which almost uh, 45 to 50 percent is of the cotton seed cake, almost 5 to 6 million tons of cotton seed cake will be available annually. And this is used as a uh, food for the milch animals. They are basically ruminants. We uh, say them as a ruminants because this uh, 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 problem with this cotton uh, seed cake as a feed, uh, as animal feed is that it is having a gossipal content in itself, which uh, renders its or restricts its scope to become a food only for the ruminants because they have got a separate microbes in their gut which uh, digest this uh, particular uh, seed cake. Whereas if this is given as a feed in the non-ruminants like fish and poultry, so it doesn't uh, become a good protein source. Sometimes it may end up poisonous as well because of the presence of gossip pulp. So we have developed a de technology which is uh, based on uh, microbial uh, technology which will be removing this gossipal content. So that is the gossipal content will be reduced to the level which is prescribed, which will not be poisonous as a feed. So this uh, degossipalization has been techn uh, technology has been developed. And we have uh, done it on a small scale based on our oil plant, which is present in the Nagpur area pilot plant. So based on the cotton seed, which is uh, being done, we have just developed a setup where we have developed the cultures. We have uh, mass multiplied the culture in the drum and then with the help of this mixture where we mix the uh, cotton seed meal with this uh, microorganisms and then give an incubation period of almost uh, one day where it acts on the gossipal present in those cotton seed meal. Then it is dried and then it can be used. It becomes a feed which is uh, eligible to be a food for even the non-dominant animals like poultry and fisheries. So this broadens the scope of uh, uh, this cotton seed meal as a feed in the uh, livestock sector. So the basic advantage of this uh, technology is that uh, it reduces the gossipal content uh, by almost uh, 60 to 80 percentage and it reduces the crude fiber as well. And the advantage of this is that 
the lysine content that is uh, one of the uh, amino acid which is very essential that is being increased because of this microbial process and the protein content is also improved to 40 percent which enables it to be a better feed and uh, this uh, if we further define if the uh, gossipal content is further reduced we can even think of uh, using this cotton seed cake as a protein supplement for humans as well because that work is still going on this one we were able to uh, significantly develop and we uh, through one of uh, this uh, mr irfan ali is the person who has taken up this venture actually he had attended one of the training on cotton uh, value chain and the cotton uh, seed and he was influenced by this technology he already had a oil mill so he th thought of uh, just uh, expanding his existing infrastructure with uh, this particular facility and he is with our uh, assistance he has broadened the scope and he is now developing degossipalized cotton seed meal and he is able to have his market also for the poultry and he has uh, been successful in doing this business and he is located in Karnataka. Now, uh, moving on to the cotton stocks. So the cotton stocks, uh, which is considered as a waste, and now the government programs is there to make uh, wealth from this waste. And we have developed a lot of uh, potential technologies where this cotton stocks can be effectively utilized. And we are uh, trying to promote them. And uh, we thought that uh, here the success will be more when we uh, even go to the farmers level and make them more entrepreneurial so that it can be effectively used. So if you see almost 26 million tons of stocks are annually available and uh, maybe uh, 10 or uh, about 10 percent is being commercially utilized and the rest of the things are either being burnt or being uh, stubbled back into the field itself. So the property of the cotton stock is that it has been uh, we have done uh, various products like if we have, we have done a particle board and we have found that it is almost having a property equivalent to that of a board made from the wood pulp so all the other properties are also matching but the thing is uh, it will be very difficult to promote uh, cotton stocks into that particular industry because of a uh, clash of uh, that is the competitiveness of cotton stocks with that of the other uh, raw materials the super can beggars seems to be much cheaper and they are able to make a better board from that so because of this uh, com competitive advantage so we Sorry, are trying to mean, promote that into the other ventures so to do that, uh, one of the other uh, significant aspect of this cotton stock is that it is having a gross calorific value of around 4,000 kilocalories per kg, where it can be a good source of uh, industrial uh, raw material for uh, energy generation, which will become a renewable source of energy. Because every year, because the area under uh, cotton is being continuously more than 12 million hectares, and we are able to produce more than uh, 25 million tons of cotton stocks, which will be available every year around the year so it can become a renewable source of energy and uh, that is the reason why we are just promoting uh, making of briquettes and pellets and if uh, possible the farmers can also make a uh, uh, on-farm entrepreneurship by uh, going in for mushroom cultivation or developing the compost from this raw material so if you see the commercial stock as a briquettes uh, so there are many briquetting plants are there, but uh, to have use a cotton stock into the briquetting, so it uh, has to have the binding material and the quality of the uh, raw material. So these two has to be ensured so that we are able to make a better briquettes. So this can be used as a substitute for coal in the boilers, industrial boilers. So this will uh, replace the use of coal in the industrial boilers where the uh, non-renewable energy source can be replaced by a renewable uh, source of energy. And uh, another constraint when we go for this uh, grow biomass itself is that they will be seasonal. They will, uh, cotton stocks, if you see, it will be available for a period of four months, beyond which it will be very difficult to have the cotton because it is a, once a crop in a year. So it can be also supplemented with the other uh, grow biomass like soybean uh, is also a potential raw material to make briquettes and pellets. And when we replace, it will be much cheaper source and it will be a renewable source. Besides, it will be also giving an additional income to the farmers because generally this uh, cotton stocks are being burnt in the field. So now we are making it as a 
economic products that is a produce which has some wealth so it has got a simple process where uh, the raw material has to be chipped and it has to be uh, fed into this through uh, screw conveying system where the through extrusion process this briquetting or the uh, final briquettes are being made and this uh, briquettes as i told you it has got an application in the boilers and uh, as an initiative from our institute we want in order to just to promote the diversified use of or uh, additional use of this uh, briquettes we have also developed the uh, crematorium which operates based on the briquettes this will also help to replace the use of wood in the cremation process uh, which can be replaced with the help of this briquettes so that uh, additional uh, demand for this briquettes can be created so it is a uh, if you see the commercial establishment of briquette plants it uh, seems to be costing around uh, 45 to 50 lakhs will be the overall investment and uh, within 2 uh, years we will be able to take up because uh, it is having uh, low operating cost and we will be, uh, the total cost around 3 to 3 rupees 50 paise will be the cost of production and we will be able to get 4 or 4.5 rupees per kg of briquettes so because uh, if the volume of production is very huge we will be able to uh, get the initial investment within a uh, 2 years the payback time for this is almost 2 years with a higher roi and other aspect of utilization of this cotton stock is the uh, making in them into pellets pellets is nothing but the uh, making the condensation of this raw material into a smaller size because the briquettes are uh, slightly bigger with almost 90 mm diameter in pellets it is smaller size and it can be have use in the cooking process and uh, for uh, either in the restaurants or in the small cooking where we can use it as a renewable source and uh, same is the case here uh, because in the restaurants and in other dabas they use uh, cylinders for cooking which is highly costly if you are able to replace that with the stoves which can uh, work on uh, pellets it will be much better so if you see uh, in the market if you see abelon is one of the major international player who is making uh, this uh, pellet stoves and uh, they give the stoves along with the pellets which they make from the uh, pine wood because uh, pellets made from pine wood are uh, way of very good quality and it has got a very low ash content so it is able to give a good uh, result but if you see the agro biomass which especially that of uh, cotton and others which has been used and the ash content goes up to 6 to 8% any agro residue based pellets it has an ash content more than 6 to 8% so when we use this in the existing pelleting stove it has got a problem that the uh, removal of uh, ash becomes a major issue because if we keep on storing then it uh, spoils the stove so in order to just uh, ensure that it doesn't uh, restrict the demand of uh, pellets made from the agro residues our institute has also developed uh, another pelleting stove which can operate effectively with the uh, pellets having a higher ash content of uh, 6 or uh, more more effectively and we have also commercialized the technology to the uh, machinery manufacturers so uh, pelleting plant can uh, operate either in the large scale or small scale if it if you want to have it in a smaller scale operation at a village level or in your area of, with a group of farmers smaller uh, pelleting plant would be more effective uh, and its cost is also much more uh, cheaper rather than when we go for a larger pelleting plants and here also the prices of pellets are uh, much higher compared to that of briquettes we are able to sell it almost uh, seven and a half rupees per kg that is the price at which pellets are being demanded because uh, there is a huge amount of uh, dabas and uh, restaurants which have a demand for these pellets compared to briquettes so they are and the efficiency or fuel efficiency of pellets are much higher compared to that of the briquettes which renders it to be highly priced the basic problem in uh, using this briquettes uh, and pellets that is a uh, use of cotton stocks for making briquettes and pellets is the transportation logistics because if you see the uh, cotton stocks these are bulky even uh, presently for disposing of this cotton stocks in the field farmers have to spend around 600 to 800 rupees or even up to 1000 rupees to co- collect it collate it and then burn it so 
taking this uh, branchy stocks from the field to the commercial production side it will become much more transportation would be more uh, costlier making it uh, uh, not a viable product to be used in this process as a raw material so our institute we have developed the uh, supply chain logistics as well for this where we have worked out a different uh, models of transportation how to take this one and we have found that it would be more efficient to chip the stocks into smaller size and if this chipped stocks are being transported uh, almost a huge volume of stocks can be transported and it also saves the labor in the field and it uh, enables easy access for the uh, producers to get a chipped stock to process it further so we have developed that model and it uh, seems to work in the radius of 50 kilometers and uh, this uh, has been demonstrated to the farmers and one of the achievement of this is that uh, from progressive farmer who is in the area of uh, amravati he was very much influenced by this technology he has uh, uh, been incubated in our service and he has learned about piloting all these processes and he thought that it will be more viable to collect the stocks and then supply to the uh, existing bricketing plant so he just identified the source plant one uh, uh, bricketing plant is located at katol and akpur so he thought that how to source this raw material so he just uh, made a group of almost 1000 uh, farmers covering an acreage of around uh, 5000 acres in the nearby village surrounding this one and he has started collecting the stocks from these through this uh, chipper he has uh, custom hired the chipper tractor along the trolley and he is using that and during the season he just uh, collects this chipped stock from the field and then supply to the bricketing uh, plant which is located in the katol so this has become a viable commercial model because it will be very difficult for the individual farmers to dispose of the stocks but if you want to if you are bring in entrepreneurial angle to this it can become a promising enterprise because every year you can be able to just uh, collect the stocks and you are able to supply the raw materials so uh, working in the supply chain also provides a income so this ensures a stable income for the farmers in those locality for the stocks you are able to get your own income and you are having a, it also enables a regular supply of the stocks to the uh, bricketing plants because the regular supply of the raw materials will be very much essential for those plants to operate uh, considering this as a raw material so this model has been successfully demonstrated and this uh, gives the various uh, places where uh, it can be used that briquettes and pellets like in boilers or in distilleries or bakeries even in the dyeing or bleaching plants in the processing of agro products like tobacco curing oil milling wherever the boilers are being used so this can be briquettes and pellets can be used as a source of the energy so now uh, besides the uh, working in cotton uh, since we also worked in other uh, natural fibers like banana fiber we have also got exposed to working with other agro biomass especially this uh, banana banana pseudo stems because we extract fiber from the banana pseudo stem after which it becomes a uh, waste so we thought uh, we can make them into different valued products and we have developed technology for uh, different products from the uh, pseudo stem so this has sent to some people and this one is uh, one of the promising enterprise uh, who has grown up much higher now uh, this person is mr sandeep nikam he has started an fnv pack so his uh, background is that he is an engineer who worked in germany that on the automotive industries where he was uh, very much enthused by the use of this composite materials because composites are uh, being used in the automotive parts different parts so he thought that uh, that to these basic raw materials are uh, coconut fibers coir coir fibers and banana fibers are some of the major ingredients in development of the composites so he thought of developing his own material so he has come back and started this venture so initially now he is working on this uh, banana soda stem fibers and he is mixing them and to try to make uh, different kitchen utilities he is also making uh, seedling trays because uh, presently if you see the seedling trays it is being made of uh, uh, synthetic materials which has got the problem of uh, decomposition biodegradability is an issue 
so uh, he along with our uh, technological input uh, he is now uh, trying to make this different uh, biodegradable seedling trays and uh, he has also developed uh, in our collaboration uh, a resin which can be used bio resin which is also having a degradability so based on which he has developed uh, wall panels using banana fiber uh, as the raw material so the uh, the room which is being furnished on the top upper ceiling as well as in the side uh, colorful materials are, are being done with the help of this banana pseudostem fibers and all this coloring all these things have been naturally done and even this petals he has got to develop uh, technology also to make uh, uh, giving aesthetic look to those uh, panel boards so he is now uh, established himself in pune and uh, he has been successfully uh, developing his uh, business based on this technology so other uh, industries which we have incubated is that uh, using the same bananas because it can be used for mul multiple uses so we have developed this uh, pulping technology from this banana soda stem so from this uh, pulped thing they are making a grease proof paper so this is uh, another industry banana gold industry which is located in gujarat who got uh, himself incubated so as an add on they are also making a uh, kitchen uh, dishwares as well and they are mainly focusing on the grease proof papers and this one is a interesting case where uh, it is uh, like a linkage of uh, two incubation units so basically this uh, person who is a engineering graduate uh, he has started this uh, fuma labs private limited in the business incubation center at pune ncl pune so ncl pune has a venture center uh, which incubates uh, entrepreneurs so his main purpose was to develop uh, biodegradable resins which can be used in the development of composites so in the, his incubation at pune he has developed the biodegradable resins so rather than marketing that he wanted to go one step further to develop uh, composite material himself since that uh, burning of this uh, rice stalks has become a major issue he thought of using this rice straw as a base material to make composite board with the help of this biodegradable resins since our institute had expertise in this development of uh, particle boards and panel boards so he became an uh, incubator so because he became incubator of two incubation centers simultaneously so we helped him in development of this particle board so he has established a, a brand name crast which develops uh, particle boards from the part, uh, uh, paddy straw so these uh, because whenever we enter into incubation uh, we just uh, get the basic into incubation fee technology mentor fee and uh, we sign up a mou based on and we work with the terms and conditions so once they are getting incubated here and they are uh, full fledgedly feeling that they can do on their own business and after going out of uh, our institute and establishing full fledged business so they operate for one or two years and the exit period comes into practice and they become a full fledged startups so now coming uh, to how this agri business uh, incubation is uh, operating mainly in the north system and if we come to specifically to the, that which is particularly working in sircot compared to the other incubations what are the limitations if we see basically basic thing is that we are limiting ourselves to agriculture technology as such so we are not broadening our scope in other aspects and one of the major lacuna in uh, this is that most of the incubators which are working within the isr system are funded through the institutes that is they are uh, not having a full autonomy uh, both in administrative as well as in the financial autonomy as a result of which they are dependent on institute for administrative or mentoring for support as well as for finance so this restricts the operation of uh, full fledged aba because if aba is able to operate with complete autonomy as a separate body within the institute so it will become uh, much more uh, professional and uh, other basic problem with this uh, agri business incubation is that we provide mainly the technology mentoring so we are able to give them and we help the incubators in the aspects of production so any lacunas or any improvements that needs to be done in the production stage with the um, modification or refinement of the technology we are able to assist them but uh, the major part of when we go to business it is a market that plays a major role 
technology is in for production but uh, the marketing aspects we are not uh, assisting the incubators to go to a greater extent except that we are able to give them that it has been developed in collaboration with the icer institute and uh, other uh, lacuna is that we are uh, limited we can say that we are limited in arranging the finance for the incubators so that is another limiting factor because they come they are able to develop a technology into a business but the major thing is that the funding and the market so these two we are uh, not exposing or we are not uh, able to hand hold them in these two areas so that is the major lacuna in this is, uh, existing aba system so coming uh, uh, to the uh, end of the presentations if we see uh, so i don't think that this is uh, the bottlenecks so but uh, still we can say that uh, agri business incubation really serves as a viable mode compared to the earlier process of technology commercialization where now we are able to transfer the technology and make them into a sustainable business themselves and especially if we come to the agro biomass area there is an ample scope for entrepreneurship development at a different levels and uh, these incubations will help uh, both the ways like uh, that gives a uh, remunerative income to the farmers go for a cleaner environment and besides we are able to develop a new business new employment and it uh, also uh, promotes the growth of the country nation maybe uh, through uh, to the extent possible by itself and uh, new wing now has been added to our uh, circuit aba because earlier we were uh, restricted on the aspect of finance so now because of our performance uh, this plastic uh, kshi because you know uh, through this rkb why we got uh, another uh, raftar aba so where there is a provision for providing pre seed and seed stage funding to the innovative business entrepreneurship so here uh, two things are there uh, our uh, area has broadened beyond the cotton technology now we are uh, giving any innovative ideas which is coming in the agriculture scenario we are able to have a network with the concerned agriculture universities and if it is a novel idea and if it is going to be economically viable we are trying to nurture them or mentor them to develop them into a business and we are uh, trying to promote them and once if they are found to be eligible they are being given a seed stage funding of up to 25 lakhs through institute so if, uh, in the recent achievement if we see this are some of the achievements where uh, these are uh, our uh, around 15 uh, incubators 14 incubators who were registered on the rkvy aba they were able to get a funding of almost 144 lakhs to develop their enterprise so now our area has broad, broadened beyond the cotton uh, production textiles into uh, basic agriculture and even uh, beyond that one so some of the products which have been developed is that uh, mango butter from the seed mango seed then the multi purpose farm equipment which can be operated in manually without uh, much effort and the hand operated cotton seed picker and use of uh, natural dyes from uh, fruit residues especially this pomegranate residues so which gives this color for the shirts so these technologies are uh, like a pre seed stage when it is it is their concept or idea to make them into a uh, prototype products we are giving them fund up to 5 lakhs so these four have been selected for funding and these are the rest 10 uh, where uh, they are developing a natural fiber based uh, rubber pots with a natural fiber reinforcement so that they are sturdy and it can be used for uh, ornamental uh, crop growing which is biodegradable as well and uh, other uh, aspects of technology like uh, as i told you fnv packs where they are making panel boards Uh, development of herb mulberry tea leaves then uh, nano finished sleeping bags which enables comfortable sleeping because uh, sleeping bags are made of synthetic fibers we just uh, uh, make a comfortable uh, through cotton lining and giving them nano finishing so that it is antibacterial as well as mosquito repellent and development of uh, fiber reinforced paper based products so these are the new ventures which we are uh, now incubating and they have received the funds and this has added a wing to the agri business incubation center at sitkot now we are having able to give the funding as well so hopefully i think this will uh, take us a step forward to promote more business entrepreneurship in agriculture and uh, cotton technology based innovative entrepreneurship thank you
thank you sir uh, yes uh, now if we have any questions uh, i think we have uh, gone over time uh, anyways we can take a query or few if there are any questions please ask uh, uh, make it very precise and brief uh, as we have already gone over our time thank you are there any queries or questions relating to the subject matter please ask maybe if you are interested to write also you can uh, maybe uh, uh, the organizers can circulate my email id or you can track it from our institute as well maybe you can write to us also later i'll put the uh, email id in the chat also so that they in case they need the email address hmm thank you sir thank you i think there are no further questions sir on behalf yeah. of the uh, organizing committee as well as on behalf of the participants uh, we thank you uh, thank you for being with us uh, and sharing those wonderful thoughts about the subject matter thank you sir thank you thank you thank you very much participants can join back at 230 for the next session okay